Hello, welcome to Biograd TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Joyce Banda Talking of strength, growth, development, equality and independence in Malawi. A woman more intentional on the interest and recognition of women, whom some even refer to as Iron Lady, who stood against domestic violence and bad governance championed her way to become the first female vice president of Malawi in 2010, second female president on the African continent. And that woman would be Joyce Banda. Joyce Hilda Ntila Banda was born into a disciplined family which her father, Gray Ntila, was a visionary police officer and mother, Edith Kimwele, who took the main responsibility to train her alongside four siblings. Joyce was born on the 12th of April 1950 in Malemia village, Zomba district, where she saw through her elementary and high school. She bagged her first bachelor's degree in art on early childhood education from Columbus University in the United States, which some critics believe to be an unaccredited distance learning institution. She wouldn't stop as she went further to bag another bachelor's degree in social studies on gender studies from Atlantic International University in the United States, also a diploma in management of non-governmental organization from the International Labour Organization ILO Center in Turin, Italy, icing the cake with a master's degree on leadership at Royal Roads University in Canada. Joyce didn't have a good experience with her first marriage, which happened in her mid-twenties. Briefly, at age 25, she was married to Roy Kachela in Kenya, with whom she had three children. After years of enduring a rash marriage, she decided to break out with her children in 1975 with the help of a growing women's movement in Kenya. Her marriage with Roy Kachela finally hit the rock in 1981 when it was legally dissolved. Her beauty wouldn't keep her single for a long time, even after three children. She eventually got married to Richard Vanda, who was a renowned lawyer, now a retired Chief Justice of Malawi. Their lovely union birthed two lovely children, a really blessed bonding that made her sweet path to the top. With the position and connections of her husband, she was able to break into politics. It was a new beginning for Joyce when she found her keystrokes in politics in 1999. She joined the United Front Party UFP. When the opportunity arose, she contested and won a parliamentary seat in Malawi's third democratic election as a member of the United Front Party chaired by President Bakili Muluzi, she represented the Zomba Malosa constituency. President Bakili Muluzi, the first freely elected president of Malawi, appointed her as Minister for Gender and Community Services. She was quick to use her new office as a means to enact the domestic violence bill, which turned out to be futile for several years. Relentless steel. She was able to promote a platform for action on orphan and vulnerable children and zero tolerance campaign against child abuse, established National Association of Business Women and also chaired Young Women Leaders Network. She got re-elected in 2004 while as a member of the United Front Party, even at the expense of Bakili Muluzi who lost the presidential election to Binguwa Mutarika, who became the new president. Her first two years in office must have impressed President Bingu Mutarika as she was appointed the Minister of Foreign Affairs in 2006. Madam Joyce, now rooted in politics, aiming for a higher political post, played her cards quite well while she crossed carpets to the Democratic Progressive Party DPP to run as the vice presidential candidate alongside the incumbent president in the 2009 
presidential election. Lo and behold, it was a success as she became Malawi's first female vice president. There is always two sides of a coin, right? Same with politics, they come together to win. After the win, interest and differences begin to smoke the atmosphere. Exactly what transpired in 2010, just a year after the unimaginable feat, Joyce was advised by the ruling party spokesperson, Heatherwick Ntaba, in 2011 to resign from her post as the vice president of the country, but as expected, such advice wouldn't give an ambitious Joyce a nap. So, as words and actions fly day after day, so the tension between the vice president and president Bingu Mutarika worsened. With an obvious attempt to be replaced with Peter Mutarika, the president's brother, she was fired as the vice president of the Democratic Progressive Party and was expelled. She smartly formed and became the leader of the People's Party while she still retained the office of vice president constitutionally. Life happened when the inevitable came uninvited. On the 5th of April 2012, President Bingu Wa Mutharika ceased to be a member of this world. Confusion stirred the air on who's to become the new president of Malawi. Things were really out of place as the vice president is no longer a member of the ruling party. Going by an African proverb that says, whenever the journey seems blurry, we seek the guidance of the elders. Ex-president Bakili Muluzi insisted on the constitutional order that affirms the vice president must automatically take power. The constitution definitely was in favor of Joyce Banda. Meanwhile, in the early hours of April 7, there was a cabinet meeting from the ruling council appealing the court to stop Banda from becoming the president. But that won't be enough to stop Joyce this time, as she was very close in becoming the most powerful woman in Malawi. She quickly sought the help of the army commander for protection, General Henry Odilo. She was sworn in as the president on the 7th of April 2012, presided by Chief Justice Lovemore Munlo. Shortly after the swearing-in ceremony, she swung into action, first reshuffling the cabinet, appointing 23 ministers with 9 deputies and reserved key portfolios to herself so as to strengthen her political prowess in the country. After a month in power, Joyce decided to toll the line of devaluing the Malawian kwacha by 33% against the United States dollar in an attempt to attract more donor funds from international organizations and grants from foreign countries which prompted panic buy by Malawians living in urban areas, a move that surely hiked the price of imported commodities. During one of her international trips for a meeting at the United Nations, there was the Capitol Hill cash gate scandal which has to do with money laundering with fingers pointing at the president's office. On her return on the 10th of October 2013, she felt insecure and smelled betrayal amongst her cabinet. She swung into action by sacking all members of the cabinet, including the noble Ken Lipenga, Minister of Finance, and Ralph Cassambra, Minister of Justice. She quickly set up a new cabinet, appointing new loyal members from her political party, she also tried to uplift the ban on homosexuality, but wasn't successful. Her entrepreneurial skills cannot be overlooked as she was able to revamp the economy already experiencing a nosedive before she assumed office. It is believed the presidential jet which was sold for $15 million was used to cater for the poor masses. In October 2014, Joyce Banda was named the 40th most powerful president in the world and most powerful president in Africa, according to Forbes list 2014. She was also included in the BBC first 100 most influential women in the world. In 2014, she contested for the presidential office under her party, People's Party, but this time ran out of luck, lost to Peter Mutarika 
rather to her former boss. She tried to nullify the election as the incumbent but was out of reach already. She was with no choice than to seek political asylum outside Malawi from the early days of 2014. Accusations erupted and a warrant for her arrest in connection with alleged corruption during her stint as president was announced on the 31st of July 2017, although she remained outside the country. She denied the charges and said she would return to face them. What have we missed out of this biography of Joyce Banda? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.